Welcome back to the game room. I'm Justin. Today we're looking at an, another arcade repair tips video. This time we're looking at how to paint the back glass of an arcade machine. So here we have a World Rally. Um, it is in a generic cab. It has the glass at the back there, but it has never been painted. It used to have um, a screen that pretty much fit this whole area. It was changed over with this LCD screen. And now I want, I don't want to see the LCD screen, the border of it as much as I can now. I don't want to see what's going on in, in the back of the machine. So here is a nice and quick, cheap way to do this. And it looks really effective. Here's our collection of things that we're going to need for the job. Obviously we're going to need paint. For all of my arcade machines that I have painted, I have used this paint here. It is oil-based enamel and this one is a satin black. I really wanted a black paint that would not reflect the light back very much. So as you can see, there's a bit of paint around the side here. It's a very flat type of black. This is not very expensive in this little can here. And this can has lasted me, I think I've done four or so jobs and I've still got enough paint for this next one at least. So it does go a long way. Here we have painter's tape. So this is much better than your traditional masking tape. It peels off better. It has a better um, stick to the surface so that you don't get that seeping underneath any of the of the tape. Um, so definitely a must there. And it comes off easily and you don't end up with big globs of sticky residue left to clean off. It comes off perfectly. Here I have a little trim paint roller kit. If I was doing this all the time, then I would be buying brushes and cleaning chemicals to be able to clean the brushes up each time. And the last thing is what we in Australia called a Stanley knife, just because of the brand name, but it is a box cutter. Um, anything would do, like as in a pair of scissors or anything. So this isn't something that is a must. These three are. This is one that just makes it a little bit easier than using, say, a pair of scissors or things like that. A non-essential item that I like to use is a heat gun. In the past I have used a hairdryer and this is purely just for the, to dry the first application off so I can get the second application on without having to spend the time waiting for it to dry. Um, if I wanted to, I could paint, leave it to dry overnight or however long it takes to um, be able to do, do my second application, but this just speeds things up. Not an essential, definitely not something that I'd go out and spend money on for this particular job. It's just that I have it here and as I said, normally I just use the white hairdryer. So, first of all, make sure that you're sitting where you would be while you're racing. Consider other people's heights when you do this and not just your own. Uh, my kids are on this machine all the time, so I need to consider that they're looking down at a lower angle and I'm only of average height so um, people who are taller than me are going to be seeing it from a more upward angle. So when you've got that kind of view sorted when you're sitting down and you're looking or if you're doing a stand up if you're standing and you're looking at where you're normally going to be seeing the screen then you want some of this. Take your painter's tape make sure you bring it out slowly. This is not going on the painting side here to begin with so I don't need to worry too much about the little cut in the top. I definitely would worry about that if it was on the painter side. And then I want enough to go across the screen. I'm going to rip that off. And I'm going to figure out where I can place that tape to make it square and you really want to make sure that it is going to be as straight as you can get it. Okay. So you can see I really took my time there to get that square. You'll want to do that as well. You could measure this and um, have it all perfect. But the thing is the screen in the back may not be perfectly um, level. So even if you got this bit all measured up in comparison to um, the other parts of your cabinet, it's not going to really matter if your back screen's a little bit off, then um, it's going to throw the whole thing out. So I find it much better just to um, go by 
my eye rather than to use um, any measuring devices at this stage. So I want the same with the top. Okay, looking at that I've made a mistake because I was closer up. Um, when I come back I can actually see a whole strip of the screen. So I'm going to reapply that one. Alright, once you have that taped up, that gives you a guide for your painting surface, which is the back. So now we need to take our glass out. Just made a very stupid mistake giving the dog a golf ball to chew while I do this. So pardon about the uh, noise in the background, but I don't have the heart to take it off him and now I've given it to him. Right, with this one, that's all it was. Two latches on the inside, um, the top piece of the, to keep the screen in. That's all it, that's all there was. So just a, just undoing the latches from the back and the three screws, screws from the top. I don't want it to fall down. Oh, don't make me go back there. <sighs> it's stuck in the back there, but I don't really want to climb to the back to go and get it. Let's see. Almost. Ah, look at that. Upstairs for thinking. Okay. All right, so here's my computer monitor that I've got in here. Really, you know, whatever monitor you have. There are some parts, and I'll see if I can get the camera around. See, there are some parts that um, are different colors. So what I'm going to do while I'm in here, take off the sticker to the monitor. I'm also going to use some of the extra black paint that I have to give that a quick go, that a quick go, and maybe even the top just to um, blacken those so that your eye is not drawn towards them. I right, got a bit of window cleaner here. I've actually got some metho, um, some methylated spirits. Try and clean this one up a little bit because it's got some sticky residue I've prepped my area for painting. I've got some things down to make sure that we don't make a massive mess anywhere. I've got my paint tin there. I've got my rollers here. I have my glass tape and I've got my um, Stanley knife or my box cutter. All right, now I've got my measurements, but it's on the other side of the glass, as in the side that you view from, but it's not on the part where we need to do the painting. So now what I'm doing is I'm using this guide, and you might have been wondering why I taped up the wrong side. This is the part that we're going to use as the guide for when we're taping this side up. So now that I've got this all sorted out, I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to line it up on the inside. And this time, instead of going for the same spot, we're not going over the same spot, we're going to do the inner. So we want the tape to end at that inner line and we want the inside bit to be protected. So I'm putting my um, line down here. In the past, the first few times I did this, I put some paper behind this as well so that I wouldn't make any mess here, but I'm going to try and do it without today. So as I was saying before, on the inner edge, not doing any cutting with my Stanley knife just yet, or my box cutter. Do that at the end, it'll be much easier at the end. Right now, I've got all four pieces of tape on. I can actually see where I need to cut because it's got a nice straight edge where those other pieces of tape um, overlap. If I had tried it before I had all four pieces of tape on, I wouldn't have had those um, guides. So now, all I need to do is gently run my 
knife along that edge. I don't want to cut it through and score the glass if I can help it. Try and be as accurate as possible with your cuts. It's pretty close to, to perfect, not exactly, but it's, it's close enough for me. All right, I'm just gonna clean that excess adhesive that the tape has left behind because I was doing some cutting. Just going to get rid of all that so that my paint doesn't bubble or anything around that. Give that paint a good shake. Grab a little bit of paper towel just in case. Really give that brush a good roll in the paint. You want the whole brush to be the colour of whatever you want to paint. I guess you wouldn't have to do these black all the time, you could do it any colour you like. You notice there's bubbles appearing. That is not a problem. Most of those bubbles will disperse. Some of them will not. Um, you might end up with some spots that are thicker than others, which I do have on my other machines. Depending on how fussy you are, depends on how many times you'd like to go over it, depends on how long you'd like to spend trying to fix it up. Just make sure you go over that tape. As I said, it might be a good idea to put some paper under the tape in this area. You might like to go the same way with the brush the whole time. I'm not too fussy about that. I'm going to swap my brush over and go up and down here. And the edge of the glass is a bit that tends to miss the paint the most. This is where I am impatient and I want to do this very quickly. So I'm going to get this right off with the heat gun. While I set that there, I'm actually going to move over and paint the those little bits of the screen that we could see through the, um, the name of the monitor and things like that. Right, this doesn't have to be anything particularly fancy. I'm just trying not to get paint on the monitor itself. Yeah. This second coat, it's not like a second coat on the side of a house or things like that. You're actually not going to see the second coat because it's on the inside. This is really just going to fill in those, any little gaps or any, um, any thin parts of my paint job. See if we can't get some of this tape off, see what starts to happen. Now, with the tape, I was take the tape away from the inside. Sorry, away from the. <laughs> Let's take the tape away from the outside, so as not to pull any of the paint away. Okay, we've got everything back in place. Um, the only thing that we still have is a tape around here, but as we see when we plug this in, once we take this tape off, it should look really good. Really nice. And as we can see, just looking a ton better. It's looking really nice. I'll give that a spray with the, the Windex later or the um, glass cleaner and that'll be perfect. Really made a difference colouring in, um, especially the side panel, just to hide all of that, um, those buttons and the, the off button and the, uh, the branding and the model number of the screen.
Thanks for joining me for another The Game Room video. If you like this one, please give it a like down below. That would really be much appreciated. Um, if you have any comments, then you can drop those below as well. I've got plenty of other videos on my channel, so if you like this one, then check those out. And even if you didn't like this one, you might find something else that you like on the Game Room channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.